The Ascent cervical collars come in four adult sizes and five pediatric sizes to accommodate a wide range of patients and anatomical differences. The first step to selecting a collar is identifying the appropriate size. For adult collars, you use the front side of the provided sizing card. You position the sizing card at the top of the trapezius muscle, and then you draw an imaginary line up from that point to the patient's chin. In this case, this patient's size aligns with size regular. For pediatric collars, you look at the back side of the sizing guide, you identify the child's age, weight, and length, and then choose the correct corresponding size based on those factors. In this video, we will only show the fitting process on the adult collars. The pediatric collar follows the exact same principles. The Ascend 172 collar comes out of the packaging with the back panel applied to the front collar using the hook and loop straps. Detach the straps and separate the two halves of the collar. As you are fitting the collar, ensure that the peak of the tracheal opening is pointing down. Similarly, on the back plate, ensure that the peak of the opening is pointing downward. You can also tell correct orientation by looking at the QR code label and identifying that the words are properly oriented when applied. The logo on the strap should also have the words properly oriented when applied. Confirm the flexible tabs are below the cutout in the middle of the plate. On the anterior plate, the flexible tabs should be below the tracheal opening. We start the fitting with the posterior panel. Start by positioning the panel under the patient's head and neck, ensuring that it's centered along the midline of the head and align the straps so that they are equidistant between the top of the trapezius and the bottom of the patient's ear. Take the anterior panel and bend the flex tabs out slightly prior to fitting. Take the back edges and bend them inward in order to pre-shape the collar to fit more snugly around the patient's neck. Apply the anterior panel under the patient's chin. This is a good time to check and ensure that the height of the collar is ideally positioned to achieve a neutral neck position after the fitting. Once I position the anterior panel, I'm going to wrap the posterior straps around and engage the hook on the anterior panel. Ideally, you want the straps to end equidistant to each other. Remember, you can modify the tension as needed based on patient anatomy. To remove and replace the pads on the Ascend 172 cervical collar, start by removing the chin and chest pad by detaching the loop material from the hook dots that are spread around the collar assembly. To remove the pad from the posterior panel, start by pulling the strap from the outer slot on both sides of the posterior plate assembly. Now you can remove the pad by detaching the loop material from the hook dots on the posterior plate. To replace the pad, start by threading the strap through the inner slot on both sides of the pad and then center the pad on the posterior plate. Take the straps and thread them back through the outer slots on the pad and the outer slot on the posterior plate and pull them through. Use the window as a guide for centering the pad. 
Next, reattach the pads to the anterior panel assembly, starting with the chest pad. Again, use the window to center the pad on the collar assembly. You want the bottom curve of the pad to align with the bottom edge of the window cutout on the anterior collar assembly. Finally, replace the chin pad onto the anterior plate, again, centering it against the plate and re-engaging the hook dots onto the loop material of the pad. When it's done, you should have the pad approximately one half inch or one centimeter longer than the plastic panel. Hand wash pads in cold water with a mild detergent. Rinse and air dry. Carefully read fitting instructions and warnings prior to use. To ensure proper performance of the product, follow all instructions. If you experience or have an increase in pain, swelling, skin irritation, or any adverse reactions while using this product, immediately consult your licensed healthcare professional. This device will not prevent or reduce all injuries. Proper rehabilitation and activity modification are also an essential part of a safe treatment program. Consult your licensed healthcare professional regarding safe and appropriate activity level while wearing this device.